Hey everyone, welcome back. Adam here. In the last video, we created this unique list of dates for the athlete that we pick that are between these two numbers or these two dates in our date range that we set on our testing dashboard. And the athlete you pick is also on the dashboard. And I intentionally wanted to break up this formula into two different videos because it's complex. So now that we have this part of our formula down, I want to introduce the last part of it. When we got a unique list of dates, we also need to consider our checkboxes. So in our testing dashboard, we check or uncheck the events that we want, and we only want the dates to show up for the events that we want. So what we have to do is we need to add some criteria to this filter function. So what we're saying is we want a sorted unique list of dates in our database when the dates are greater than or equal to our start date that we set, and the dates are less than or equal to the end date that we set, and the dates only exist uh, for the athlete that we select in our dashboard. And notice each of these arguments or each of these conditions is separated by a comma, so we're going to do another comma and add in another condition. And this condition is going to be when this cell here is equal to the event in our database. That's why I said at the beginning that your the way that you name your events in your database have to match up with what comes through here. So to do this, we're going to do open parenthesis. I'll explain it in a little bit. So our next piece of criteria is when, let's go to our testing data, and we'll select our season phase. When that's equal to 1, and we'll close the parenthesis, plus open parenthesis when this or column E is equal to equal equal to one. And and that's it, except we're gonna change these E's to E2 to E, and we'll click enter. And I'll explain this in a second. Now what we need to do is we need to change these ones. We don't actually want these to be equal to one, we want them to be equal to instead of one the first event in our list, and over here for the second one, the second event in our list. And you may have to have, for however many events you have with checkboxes, you're going to have to have that many items in parentheses being equal to the item on, on the list, if that makes sense. So if you have five checkboxes, you're going to need this here five times. We have two, so we have it once, twice, with a plus sign in between. And let's click Enter. And we get back our original list of dates. So let's talk about what's going on here. The first is this plus sign. What's the deal with this plus sign? Well, the way that you can add multiple pieces of criteria together in an OR statement, so meaning either of these things are true, and without getting into too much detail, each of these commas is an AND, and this plus gives an OR. So let's, let, let's read through this. We want to get all of our dates in our database when the dates are greater than or equal to the start date and when and when with the comma and when the dates are less than or equal to the end date and when the athlete is equal to the athlete that we select select and when either or the event is training camp or the event is in season but the only reason why these events exist here is because we have the check boxes checked so if we uncheck a checkbox, let's see what happens. Let's go to our testing dashboard, and let's uncheck in season. And let's go back to our chart data. And now we only have one data point, because we only had one training camp within this date range. So let's go through this formula again, and it might make a little bit more sense. We want all of our dates in our database when the dates are greater than or equal to the start date that we pick, and when the dates are less than or equal to the end date that we pick, and when the athlete is equal to the athlete's name, and when the event is equal to whatever is here, which is training camp, or when the event is equal to this. And because this is blank, it's still okay. But if we had an and, right? If we said, and the event is equal to what we have here, and the event is equal to this, well, first of all, we can't have two events for the same um, date. And second is, if one of them was blank, 
it would only include dates where the event was blank. Whereas with this or, we're saying it could be training camp or blank. So we're getting back essentially all of the training camps. And if we just select in season, we'll get back all the in seasons because the other one will be blank and it's an or. So it could be in season or blank, or it could be training camp or in season. Bring back all of them inclusive. I hope that makes sense. Sorry, I know I'm probably not very good at explaining that because um, it's complicated even in my head. But now we have all of our dates um, that are interactive with our dashboard. The next thing that we need to do is get the athletes data. I'm gonna fly through this a little bit because I went over it in prior videos. In, in all, we're doing the same thing that we did in all of these essentially, um, which was a whole series of videos where we developed the first dashboard. So if you need refreshers, you can go there, but let's get the data for the athlete for the metrics that we pick. So let's actually, I'm gonna move these dates down one and I'm going to call this metric one because we do have another metric that we pick. And in this cell here, we'll go equals, go to our testing dashboard and select the first metric, which is body weight right now. And if we click enter, it'll show up here. So we know what metric we selected in our dashboard. Now we're going to use a formula called average ifs. So let's go equals average ifs, open parenthesis. Well, what do we want to get the average of? And we'll do this in two steps for those that haven't gone through this already. Let's go to our testing data and let's select our body weight column, which is right here, comma. So we want to get the average body weight. Well, we only want to get the bo average body weight when the athlete's name is equal to the athlete that we pick. So we'll do comma, one for the criterion one we did criteria range one criterion one is one but that'll end up being the athlete's name one is just a placeholder so we don't have to go back and forth between sheets comma and also when the date comma is equal to one again that'll be the date in our chart data area and i think that's it so let's close the parenthesis and click enter and now let's change one. So athlete testing data A to A equals this player, which is the name being equal to the name of the athlete that we pick. And testing data B to B are the dates being equal to not one, but being equal to this date right here. And we can click enter. And now we have the body weight for that date. Before we do anything else, I'm not going to worry about these P to P's over here, but let's lock in the A's with dollar signs before each so that when we copy and paste the formula, it won't move around. And we can lock in the AA and the four, and the B and the B, and the AC, but not the five, because when we drag this formula down, we want it to apply to each successive date. So we can click Enter. And if we were to do that right now, if we were to copy this formula and paste it down a couple, we get the body weights for all those dates, and that's great. But this is not dynamic, because if we change the metric, we are looking, we're getting the average of the body weight column no matter what. And we want this to be dynamic so that when we pick a metric, uh, the column that we look in to get our average for will change. And the way that we do that is instead of saying testing data P to P, we're going to use index and match, which are two formulas. So we'll go index, open parenthesis. And what index needs is a reference. And essentially what goes in here is any potential data um, that could go in this cell, which is all the data in our data set. Now we can say testing data, which is a named range that we created. And that named range goes from column A all the way through column DB in our data set. So we don't have to keep on going back to our data set. We did that in the first series of videos. And I will have a description in this one, or I'll have a link in this one that goes over uh, or that points you to where we do that in case you want to do it. We also made a named range for our testing headers. So now we have the testing data, and we need to tell Google Sheets which row and column to get the data from. Well, we don't have to worry about the row because the row is dictated by this criteria. So we're going to look in testing data, and we're going to get something. We're going to get the average of something in testing data, and the row 
that we're going to get that average for is when the athlete is equal to the athlete that we pick and the date is equal to this date. But for the column, which is right here after this comma where it says column, we need to do match. So we'll do match, open parenthesis. Now, how are we going to find our column? We want to match whatever this is, which is the metric that we picked. If it just stays, stays open for me for a second here. Comma, and we want to match that with, let's do testing headers, which is our headers in our testing data set. Comma, zero, an exact match, and we'll close off the parentheses, and then do a comma. And let's step through this. Well, first, let's actually just click click enter. And we can copy this formula and, and paste it over here just so we can see. Oops, I must have screwed something up. Yeah, I should have locked this in. So we'll lock in the AD and the 4 and click enter. And we can copy the formula and paste it down a couple, and we'll just see that it still works. Okay, so what are we doing? Let's forget about... Uh, okay, so we're getting the average of something in, in our testing data set. And that something, or that column, is going to be the column that matches the metric that we pick on our dashboard. That's what this says. We're going to get the, an average of the data from the column that matches whatever column this is in our data set. And we are going to get the average of that data, of this body weight data, because we picked that metric, for the athlete that is right here, which is the athlete that we pick in our da dashboard, and when the date is this date right here, which is one of our unique list of dates that we generated. Let me click enter. Now, because if we copy this formula and we paste it down a little bit further, we're going to get a little bunch of errors. One thing that we can do is we can add an if statement at the beginning. And you'll see me do this semi-frequently. We'll go if, open parenthesis, if this or the date equals quote, quote, or blank, comma, quote, quote, or blank. So if the date is blank, then let's make this blank. If that's not true, or if that's false, in other words, if this date is not blank, or there is date, or there is a date in here, then let's do this whole average ifs thing, and we can close the parentheses and click enter. And now if we copy this formula and we paste it down, and I'm just going to paste it to the bottom of our sheet. And if we click in these cells, we'll see that, that, that there are formulas in there. It's all blank until we have some data. And now what we can see is, let's change the metric. So we'll go to our testing data, or our testing dashboard, and let's choose a different metric here. Let's pick um, CMJ average. And now if we go to our chart data, now we have the CMJ average for that person on each of these dates. Now, uh, to finish off this video, let's create a chart. So what we can do is we can select our data uh, I'm just going to select this data because we're going to have to expand the range anyways um, for the first time that we do this. Oh, I just realized that this whole thing was collapsed. I'm sorry. I'll collapse it. We'll go to Insert, Chart, and here's a chart of our data. And let's copy this chart that we have here, and we'll paste it in our testing dashboard, maybe right here. We're not going to, uh, yeah, fine, we'll, we'll style it also. And now let's let's make it look kind of pretty where maybe let's click on these cells and they are columns. Let's make sure that our chart, let's go to setup. It's a combo chart. That's great. That's what we want. So that because we're going to add another line into this chart later on. So let's go to customize and we can pick the fill color. Maybe the fill color is uh, green. And Maybe we add some data labels right here. So let's click data labels and we get some stuff. And maybe we remove the title. And I don't like having the grid lines here. So I'm going to click on them and uncheck major grid lines. Or actually, no, sorry, I'm going to keep the major grid lines. The reason why I do this currently is because I like having the grid line at the bottom. And if you remove it, then there's nothing by the zero. So I keep major grid lines. And then what I do is I change the color of the grid lines to white or whatever the background of the chart is and it doesn't change the zero grid line it just changes the other ones again it's just a funky google sheets thing um, we'll remove that i don't need that there and i don't need this there either because 
I know what metric I picked right here. Then we'll go to Edit Chart and go to Customize again. Chart Style, I'm just going to say None for the background color and No Chart Border. And Compare Mode is fine. Let's put that on just in case. And now what we should have is this chart should be interactive in that if we decide to look at body weight, now we see this person's body weight over time. The last thing that we're going to do here is we are going to edit the chart and we're going to expand these ranges. So what we do is we can click on this x-axis, which is the dates, click on this select data range. Instead of AC4 to AC7 in our chart data tab, We'll go AC4 to AC, which just goes to the bottom of the spreadsheet, and click OK. And for body weight, again, let's change this. So we'll click on body weight, which is our series or our bar, and we'll select a data range and change this. Instead of 84 to 87, we'll go 84 to AD, and click OK. And now we have all of this stuff. And if we were to add more data or remove data, it would all be are responsive. So there's a chart and that's it for this video. In the next video, let's go to our chart data here for a second so I can explain. I'm actually going to delete that chart now. In the next video what we're going to do is we're going to do things similar to what we did in prior videos or in the, in the first dashboard that we built. We are going to calculate a player average, a team average, and a position average and then we are going to pick what we want to compare the player to. I'm not sure that we're going to do that all in the same video, but that will dictate the line or the average line on our chart. We'll say we'll calculate a player average, we'll calculate a team average, we'll calculate a position average, and then you can pick. You say, hey, I want to compare to the player to themselves all time or to the team or to the position, and the line will adjust. And that's it for this video, but before I go, I want you to leave a comment below with your favorite sitcom. I want to know what it is. Mine, personally, is Seinfeld. I've watched it, probably watched each, each episode at least 10 times. I'm a huge fan. And The Office, in the U.S. at least. Honorable mention, tied for first. No, Nothing against my uh, friends from across the pond, but I really love The Office U.S. And yeah, let me know what yours is. I want to learn a little bit more about you. And... If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.